Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Akila Galore, and today I'm just sending you good vibes. I just got off the phone with a family member, and I was just like, oh my God, I just found out some tea on my family. Like, I heard my family watching me. Hey, y'all. Um, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I am living my life. Um, send lots of love and joy your way. I send a lot of peace your way. I send lots of happiness your way. Um... I'm thriving. I'm thriving. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. Um, what is it about family who, you know, there's this thing in families. I feel like families are cults. All families are cults. Every single last one of them, every family, like a, a parent that has a family that has like a mom, a dad, you know, and then the kids and the grandparents and everything. I feel like all families are cults. And this is why, because in, when you have a, when you're in a cult you're in like a um a group and there are outsiders and then there's a cult leader and everything that you say you have to abide by the cult you have to abide by the rules you have to abide by certain things and if you do not abide by the rules when you're in a cult you will be ostracized and upon ostracization they will tell everybody that you're crazy don't listen to you you are losing your mind don't follow you. Don't you don't want to be like that person. That person is on the outside. You see what you see what life has done to them. Like a lot of people in your if, in cults are like that. Cults will kick you out. You know, like Scientology, they'll kick you out and then isolate you from your family and tell you don't have no communication with those people. You cannot talk to those people. I feel like families do the same thing, especially when there's a rebel in a family like me, someone who has gone against the grain of the family who has lived life on their own terms and done things the way that they best see fit without the guardianship of family or without family telling them exactly how to be and they went and made a path for their own selves and they're able to thrive and they're doing well in their life and they're they're coming on the up and up and they're continuously growing and they're learning and they're meeting new people and they're having great experiences and they are out here just doing the damn thing and your family sometimes will look at you as an outsider and say to themselves, that person didn't do what we told them to do. So we're kicking them out the family group and da -da 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 -da. they are to be ostracized. Don't talk to them. That's fucked up. But I feel like family does that a lot. And the thing about being in certain types of families, there are a lot of families out here like the Kardashians. I have some in my family that think they are the Kardashians. They think they're just so glamorous and so this and so that. And they are they just are meant to shine in front of the spotlight. Big back asses. But they ain't doing shit to, you know, they ain't doing shit like Kim. So, um, the reason why I'm saying all of this is because my family treats me like an outsider. And when I get on here and make YouTube videos telling y'all the tea about my motherfucking family and the shit that I've been through in my life, the shit that I've suppressed and uprooted, the shit that I've had to learn and unlearn, the shit that I've been conditioned. My family conditioned me to be a certain way. I was conditioned to be a certain way. I learned certain behavior patterns. I operated a certain way for years and then I had to unlearn that shit. Un uproot what has been already rooted in my life. I had to uproot it and learn new things and uncondition myself. And that shit is a lot of work. And no one talks about all of the shit that you go through when you're uprooting from family. And you're making your own path. And you're doing your own thing. Now, things can be good and easy for you. As long as you listen to certain members in your family. As long as you listen to the family members. It's almost like as long as you're doing right by the family, you will be in the will. You will be in the will. But the moment you decide to isolate and do your own fucking thing and thrive, you're out the will. You're not going to get the benefits that the family gets. You're not going to have our name. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. You're not going to be this way. You're not going to be that way. You're not, 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 not. <laughs> cackle at the thought of 
being a nonconformist. Because when I look at everyone who has conformed, I see how mundane their life is. I see how unhappy they are. I see that if only they had a chance to get out on the get out into the world and do their own fucking thing, they would be they would be up here. But because they cannot or they refuse or they will be isolated or ostracized or talked about or have no support, they refuse to change their ways. And it's kind of a uh, a tug of war when you have somebody like me in your family who's a rebel who refuses to conform who's actually living an unorthodox lifestyle compared to those of the family and you see the person in the middle like you see the tug of war you see if you follow the family you'll be on that side and you'll have a steady life stable life peaceful life but it's going to be your dreams have died or you could come on my side and be a rebel and go after everything you motherfucking imagine in your life and create your life to be exactly the way you desire it to be but you're gonna be alone and you might not have your family support there might be certain family members in your family that want to support you on your journey but they're gonna do it from afar because they don't want to not have the family support i'm that person I'm the person in the family who has rebelled against the family. And I have my family members watching me on this platform. They're going to watch this video. I know they are because that's what the fuck they do. My family members are like my fans. They are fans. They have ostracized themselves from me. Yet. Because even recently down to my sisters. Two of my sisters I used to talk to like a lot. I feel like my family has gotten to their head too. Like has gotten to them as well. Something shifted in the energy. It's like I I heard through a family member that another family member was mad because I was telling my truth on my YouTube channel about the shit that has happened to me in my life. Pause. I got a family member calling. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Akila Galore and I talk about paradigm shift in content, unlearning the ways that you were raised to be the best and highest version of yourself. And in order to do that, sometimes you have to let things go in order to allow new things to come in. Now, what you're about to see is I just said that I felt like two of my sisters were, um, the energy had shifted in between them. But when I said a family member called in, it was my sisters that I was talking about. That, that, that just like blew my mind because I was talking about them and then they called and I'm like, this is what's going on. This is how I feel. And then I, I, I confronted my sisters. I was like, Hey, the other day when I was on the phone with you, I felt your energy shift and I, and I felt like something was off. Did th this family member call you? and ask you about where you like basically asking my sisters were you talking about me with a family member and they was like girl no like girl stop they have not called us to ask us about that shit they know who to talk to and who not to talk to so you're gonna hear the conversation you're gonna see me getting ready for my date last night so this is this going forward is going to be a compilation of me talking to my sisters getting ready for a date while I was talking to my sisters. I went on the date and then I came back home, which is today, and I cycle 8.8 .8 miles. So you're gonna see a compilation of that. So just stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Yeah, don't you? And then I do it. And when you, when you was getting picked, was I, wasn't I doing your second class, bitch? I always did your hair. And I didn't teach your hair from the floor. You was a goddamn boy. And every time you didn't have sex, Way more time you should ever have in my 
What you hear is my sisters talking to each other. One of my sisters is doing my other sister hair, and they're talking shit because my sister won't sit up properly. So she's like, damn it, you pulling my hair. You goddamn doing this, you doing that. So I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> y'all are crazy. <laughs> But I'm listening because this type of energy, I'm listening to my sisters and I'm just like, oh, I miss this kind of energy just a little bit because I don't have this around me every day. So when I talk to my siblings, I be so excited and I feel so good. I never, and, and every time, I did not, I did not make you most special. You like me. Doesn't make all these motherfucking plates. I know I haven't lied to them here. You know I don't. You know I don't. It's my first time ever. And then uh, how, how many times I braid your motherfucking hair line? Never. Y'all yes, <laughs> got some motherfucking problems. Y'all got issues because I just recorded y'all whole yeah, for one minute. For one minute, y'all just going back and forth, and then Jamie gonna say, "Is you slow? You gonna say, "Is you slow or is you slow?" She gonna say, "Slow and slow." <laughs> <laughs> Tell the truth, Shannon Devil. Tell the I'm glad y'all are sisters, cause damn, if I was the hair braid or the hairstylist and the, uh, and the person in the chat, I would be feeling some type of way. Dang, she being mean as fuck, well, rude as hell. Y'all, y'all being rude to each other. I don't know. Let me tell you something tonight. Jamea has always been a very, very sweet girl. I know you ain't been writing it like this is the only answer. That's how you talk to your answer. If it be going crazy, like that be happening folks. No. So you gotta talk crazy to this bitch because she already don't talk crazy. This fool was a fool. I just be talking and that just wonder I just be so aggressive. Bitch, I'm just fucking talking. Well, look, but look what she say. Shit like that. Then you gotta match the energy. You gotta cut the ass right back at her. I not, when I just be mm -hmm, you too. Damn, y'all are so harsh to one another. Can we please put a little bit of love in this conversation? You two get your mad for me. Get the what the fuck? No, look at that series. We ain't we ain't taking each other serious. Me either. Jeez. Josh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> y'all going in my YouTube video. Oh, that's that shit. How many of them you getting? You getting a big, medium, or small? Yeah, 
So they can last a little longer. She ain't gonna keep them in her hair for two weeks, Yes, I am. I'm gonna keep them long in two weeks. What color are they? The color of my hair. Ginger. Oh, I, that is, that, that the color will tell me how long you're gonna keep it. You don't be keeping all that goddamn color in forever. I'm gonna keep it for a minute. I doubt it. Not today. Yeah, I doubt it. Look, it's today is October second. That shit, you better be in there by November second. I'm gonna keep it until um, I have stuff for my birthday. How that do it? Well, marking it. Number. Uh huh. We marking it. We marking it. She, this girl changed up her motherfucking hairstyle more than she changed up her underwear. And she changed her underwear every goddamn day. I hope so. <laughs> I don't wear underwear every day. Oh, well, she <laughs> she changed up her goddamn hairstyle just as much as she got there and get in her car to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Every day. Well, well, well. It's best when it's to get me. <laughs> <laughs> damn Jamia Jamia is Jamia is your period on no that bitch is just like that I don't know what it is every time she got that blood to the house I guarantee you she better have these damn plants in here longer than uh, two weeks she better have you, Mila. I, I don't, Mila. I ain't even got them there, but you better have them plaques in your head longer than goddamn two weeks now. And then goddamn playing with your ass now. Sit down. Sit back. <laughs> That's how Jamia sounds. <laughs> she thought she thought she thought she Well, Shamila, you better keep him in for 15 days. <laughs> hey, y'all, y'all like Glow Girl a new song? Hold on, ho, hold on, hold on, hold on, ho. Bitch, you just don't know what you just got. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Inside of fucking Walmart, he parked away a long 
this is the way on purpose to, to literally time himself running into Walmart and then he timed himself running out of Walmart. Who and did that? Jack. You no, know, Jack the classic man. And then daddy was so drunk. He had came home. He was so drunk. He was leaning. <laughs> he was so drunk. He was trying. <laughs> he took me to the hospital. Jack and daddy took me to the hospital. And yeah. Mama was out of town. I think she was at Nana's with church. I, I, I remember that. And Nana was there. I kept telling her, Nana was there because she kept trying to, trying to put freaking Yep, in yep. I remember that. I remember that. She must have came. She must have came. I said, no. Nana was in the room when I got in there. She was literally right there. I remember that. It happened. I remember that. I do remember that. But she was sleeping in my bed. I remember. Moy ain't never had no problem with no damn baby too, but she wanted to give me all of them. Moy ain't never. Moy, I'm telling you, boy. Well, I ain't telling you, but that's the truth. Check <laughs> I tell you, so you already know, ain't it? Uh-huh. See you later, y'all. 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 Where's she going? That's why Mimi want to have more kids so she can boss people around. Who? You and Jimmy. I ain't never whooped you. You used to. I ain't. Girl, every time I motherfucking put a hand on y'all ass, y'all told on me. I ain't got down hit you. I don't even remember. I don't remember. I don't remember that part. I don't remember that part. And y'all used to be doing it for no reason. If I move, if I say something. Girl, you remember? Dude, tell me. Tell me if y'all fucking remember that time when I told y'all how I like to do stuff and then I, um, with boys and then y'all fucking told mom when I came and mom made me get in that position and whoop me just like that. Y'all remember that? Y'all don't remember that? I remember that. I remember that, but I did not tell you that. I, I don't I don't remember who fucking told, but y'all remember when mom when somebody told mom Brittany said she liked to do it like this. And mom <laughs> made and mom made me get back in that position and, she, and it was with my legs in the air. And mom made me get back in that position, that belt hit nothing but goddamn thighs. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> that shit is crazy it's funny to think back on stuff now but shit trauma that goddamn childhood was a mess ain't it <laughs> that shit was a mess i ain't been right ever since and again that's why we feel like we got down bipolar in this bitch one minute we got down smiling the next minute we might be crying <laughs> Who? Mom. What happened with mom? Oil. Well, hold on. Let me cut this off. Bye, y'all. So, as I was on the phone with my siblings, they said, they're like, mom is on the way. Mom is on the way. She about to walk in the house. She about to walk in the house. Because I told y'all previously, like, I haven't been talking to my mom. And um, when my mom comes around, like, I be talking to my siblings like you see me talking now. And then my mom will come around and I'll kind of, like, just disconnect the call. Like, okay, I love y'all sisters. I'll talk to you later. Bye. And yesterday i was just in a really good mood so my mom came around and i stayed on the phone with my sisters and i said hello to my mom it's you know kind of bittersweet but it's still i guess it's progress but still i didn't get off the phone this time that's the point <laughs> you said what you said what she ain't gonna keep telling me shut up in my own house in your own house you you your mama can't tell you shut up in your own house Hey, listen, you better go ahead and head on out. Disturbing my peace and you supposed to go. She gonna come out. She gonna have to keep that attitude over there. I said I showed my attitude over here in my own house. I know that's right. You better tell it, sister. Damn. <laughs> Shit, not, not just shut up, shut the fuck up. No, you know, that was my problem. You just be saying shut up. You say shit. Even shut up is crazy. But shut the fuck up is, is, uh, bitch, that is a fucking, that's a violence. That's diabolical. You know what? You know
you just said to me, Jamia, that made me put things into perspective is Ma was more like a military person, like a military. Ma was so militant when we was younger. She's like a military soldier, and like a, a general, and we were the soldiers, and you had to listen to the soldiers. But now that we're grown, this she can't. Because she didn't develop the way that she taught to us when we were kids, it has transferred to a way that she still taught to us like we're her kids, like we're little kids, but you don't understand that we're grown now and you can't treat us the same way that you treated us when we were kids. Make sense? Literally. I just live pound town, literally. <laughs> That's so cool. So I came outside today. So I'm at my I'm on my date and I'm showing you all but due to copyright reasons I've had to mute this part of the video because a bitch is trying to get paid okay I am getting paid for putting all this content out here every time somebody watch my YouTube video that contributes to my journey of what I desire to achieve so I want to thank you all so much for being so supportive on my YouTube channel sticking with me throughout my journey and just seeing how I live my life because it's an honest one. I'm showing you my life from my perspective. I'm living in my truth. And yeah, so this SD right here, you see me out with, I'm actually drinking a, I'm drinking some Prosecco topped with Grand Marnier uh, and we're toasting to it. He took me to this place where you could do like a nightly swim. It's in the downtown Miami area. And this is what I'm showing you all right now. It's a place where you can do nightly swims. I appreciated hanging out with him because prior to this, like the day before, was very emotionally charged for me in regards to not smoking weed. It's been about 17 days, maybe like 15. No, I stopped on, what's it? I stopped on September 17th and it's October 3rd as I'm making this video. So it's been like two weeks. I'm almost to my 21 day mark of the goal of not smoking weed for 21 days and creating a new habit, like being more consistent on building on my YouTube channel, being more consistent in going after my goals and dreams and the things that I desire. We are now out to dinner and I was just, I'm just showing y'all the area. I'm just showing you like, I practice what I preach. I live by it. I will not tell you anything that I don't do. Like I wouldn't sit here and lie to you all. There are some times where I want to be careful what I put out there because I understand that there are individuals watching me from a perspective of just not genuinely wanting the best for me. But I also understand that I have much more love out here in these streets than the hate that is trying to seep through, you know, other people's pores that has absolutely nothing to do with me. I create content and I show you all what's it like in my life, whether you think of it from a sugar based perspective, my life perspective, a professional perspective, it doesn't matter. I'm going to, I'm committed to living in my truth and being an authentic person and showing you what it looks like from my perspective. So yeah, he went to the bathroom and I was out there munching. I was eating so good. It feels absolutely wonderful to live the way that I do, to not be wearing wigs. Not that I have anything wrong with wigs, but that was like one of my biggest challenges. I wanted to find a look that was for me. I wanted to find my signature hairstyle, my signature look. When you think of Aquila, what do you think of? Like when you think of Aquila, what do you see? So wearing my ball head the way that it is has just added to my authenticity of who I am as an individual. Wearing my real nails was something that I wanted to achieve for myself. And just because I was like, man, I want to have strong, long nails. And I used to always try to get this look a certain look from putting acrylic on my hands, but then I just stopped. I was like, you know what? I'm going to thug it out and figure it out. So being more authentic to who I am as an individual has been truly rewarding in life. You know, it from the time I moved down here, you already know a lot about my story. From the time I moved down here to what I'm doing now is all a testament of when you listen to your internal GPS, you can thrive regardless of what people say around you. You don't have to listen to people. You can switch up your lifestyle. You can change it. You can 
You are the CEO of your life. You can hire, fire, promote, and demote as you please. You do not, in no way, shape, or form, have to deal with people that don't add any value to your life. You can just eradicate them and move along. Don't be rude about it. You know, you don't have to have resentment about it. It's called growth and it doesn't need to be taken personally as a lot of people often do take things personally when you no longer want them in or around you because they aren't adding to your life. And when you have a vision for your life and you have goals to achieve and you have dreams and visions that you want to bring to life, you understand the importance of getting people the fuck away from you who no longer serve your highest good. So that's what my journey shows. So ladies, I'm back in the bathroom. I think this is like one of our favorite spots. We literally just linked up for today and yeah, this is the fit. Got the cute little sambas on with the skirt. I don't know how many times I've worn this outfit, but bitch, I'm gonna wear it as many times as I want. <laughs> Cause it's mine. <laughs> yeah, with the Louis. <laughs> so anyway, check your girl out. Who phone you think this is? It sure ain't mine. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, we're gonna see that. You want to be a baller, shot caller, dollar. Let me tell you something. Oh, I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> oh, I was about to tell the camera to say, tell them if a man wants you, he's going to come and get you. Is that true or no? It's true. Okay. That's all I'm talking about on the camera. I just want them I'm to know. Exactly. If a man wants you, he will come and get you. No doubt about it. Turn, let me tell you something. Let me turn some music. I turned on that music and got the goddamn jamming. I'm in there listening to I'm a piano. I'm in there jamming. And even in, look at him. Watch him right quick. Rock, watch him. Look at him. <laughs> he don't know what to do with all this goddamn gold. He don't know what to do with this goddamn brown beauty queen goddess in his presence. He don't know what to do. Look at him. Look at him. He don't know what to do. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, hey, hey. Fuck it. Oh, get it. Girl, get it, get it. Look at him. You know, he off beating everything. <laughs> but I was in there having a good old time with him. He was a genuine joy to be around. Like he was genuine. Look at him. Oh, 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 get it, girl. Get it, get it, girl. <laughs> we had such a good time. I was in there dancing. Oh, oh shit. Now nah, look at him. I put his hands up there. Look at him. Look at him. Oh. Oh. Girl, he could not keep up with me. He was trying though. He was trying, but we was in there having a good old time. Like, wow. Wow, bam, bam, get it, girl. Bam, bam. That motherfucking money. Yeah, yeah, get it, girl. <laughs> I'm just doing this voiceover because I don't want to be copyrighted from the music, but we was in that bitch jamming, having us a good old grand time. I was making sure that he felt amazing, as he should. <laughs> right now, I'm outside riding my bike. And this message is message just for my auntie, your husband, and your kids. <sighs> I know y'all are watching me on YouTube and I'm so grateful to have you here. I'm so grateful to have you as a viewer. I'm so glad that you watched my video when I talked about how your daughter did what she did to me when I was a kid, because it's true. Um, I also want you to know, the more you talk about me, the more you sit with your people, and y'all talk about me, I'm gonna keep winning. I'm going to keep getting up every day and doing my very best to succeed, to succeed at life. I'm going to keep reading books. I'm going to keep growing. I'm going to keep learning. I'm only getting sexier. And my goal is to not have a big back like you and your family. So, cause we're family members and I see that if I, do what you do, I'll be like you and I don't want that. So, yeah. I want you to know that. Oh yeah, and the more you talk about me, I'm glad y'all watch my video. Every time you talk about me and you watch my YouTube video, 
I'm, I'm riding my bike with no hands because I'm good at it. But every time you talk about me, I'm literally going to keep winning. Your hate feeds my manifestation. Move, truck! Damn! He in my way just like y'all. Y'all ain't really in my way, but you get what I'm saying. Move out the fucking way. I'm gonna keep winning. I'm just gonna keep winning. So, stop going to people in the family to find out about me and watch my motherfucking YouTube channel because everything about how I feel, I'm gonna put it on my YouTube channel. So, stop going to them. Come to me. Oh yeah, you can't call me, I blocked you. But you can reach out via social media if you want it. But nope, you're, so, you're trying to figure me out, ain't you? Keep on guessing. I don't even fucking talk to my auntie like that at all. But when I first moved down here to fucking Miami, she called me. She was one, she was one of the people who called me to make sure, like, tell me this. My auntie says, my auntie said that her husband told her I moved to Miami. Why is your husband keeping up with me? Ask yourself that. Then I hear in the family that my someone went and told her husband again her husband told her about the video i posted on my youtube channel <laughs> your husband got a close eye on me seems like he got a closer eye on me than you like what the fuck is y'all problem i don't get it i don't get it i don't get why you want to be in my business so bad i don't fuck with you or your family i don't talk to y'all y'all don't talk to me <laughs> Y'all don't fucking talk to me and never have. You've never been a fan of me, but you want to keep up with my every fucking move and that is disturbing. Your husband keeps up with me. You keep up with me from your husband's reports and then your kids keep up with me. But none of y'all ever talk to me. Never have. When we was growing up, y'all loved my sisters, especially my sister that's under me. Y'all loved her more than me. You took her places. You gave her opportunities. My cousin, my aunt offered my sister to move to California with her. My aunt offered my sister to move to Miami with her. My aunt offered every state that my aunt has, cause she's a, she works for the government. So every fucking state that my aunt has lived in, she's invited my sister to be there. And my sister said no. But then I was always open to those opportunities, but they were never granted to me ever what you don't like is that even though the opportunity wasn't given to me i still went out into the world and created my own via strangers and that's what fucking boggles your mind is because i didn't follow the family traditions and i did it on my fucking own and you're shocked and surprised now you're paying attention to my every fucking move watch this watch me get fine and paid watch me watch watch me win because that's all you're gonna keep, keep seeing me do is motherfucking win for many 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 years for many many years i admired my aunt i admired my mom's only fucking sister sorry i didn't mean to cuss for many years i've admired my mom's only sister which is my aunt I admired her for so many years because she was ambitious, she was driven, she left our hometown at an early age. She got her and her kids out of there. She didn't allow fear to hold her back. She went after her dreams and goals. She excelled in her career. She, I seen her start from the bottom and I seen her progress. I seen her build a house. I seen her get married. I mean, she had all her kids out of wedlock, but still after she had her kids, she got married. I seen. She's still married today. I watched her become who she is as a woman from afar as an admirer. Until I started looking at her, I was looking at her through my 3D eyes since I was a kid. But once I got old enough to understand spirituality and I started looking at her from a spiritual lens, things started looking a little bit different. So this is how I feel about her, her husband and her kids.
Yep. It's my truth. At this point, you could literally, like my family, there are family members in my family that could literally drop to the ground and I wouldn't give a damn. It wouldn't even change my mood. I knew I was a problem. I, I, I always knew that I was unapologetically myself and people couldn't stand that. But I knew I was a problem for unapologetically being myself when people started being bothered by my peace. Some people are bothered that you're peaceful. Some people are bothered that you learn your lessons and move on. Some people are bothered by that. You learn your lessons from people, you move on, you cut them out your life, you progress, they get mad. My great aunt was one of those people. My great aunt, my mom only has one sister, so I have one aunt, but my grandmother's sister, which is my great aunt, when I was about 18 or 19 years old, she was on the phone with her daughter because two days after I graduated high school, I moved to Atlanta and my cousin let me come stay with her, like one of my extended family members. And her mother, she was on the phone with her mother. And when she was on the phone with her mother, the phone was so loud, I could hear my great aunt say to her daughter, is that Akila? I can't stand the sound of her voice. But in years later, I'm gonna tell you, yeah, I heard my aunt say that and that hurt my feelings and I cried. I sure did when I was about 18, 19. Years later, I fucking, years later, I, it's like, bitch, move. Fucking white lady riding on the opposite side of the lane. Bitch, move before I run your ass over. But anyway, years later, I told my great aunt, I said, auntie, I reminded her of the situation. I said, auntie, years ago, I heard you say that you couldn't stand the sound of my voice. Isn't it so funny now how we having a conversation? Isn't it so funny now I'm helping you? This is a one-on-one with me and my great aunt years later, maybe like 10 years later. But I told her, I heard you say that and it hurt my feelings, but look at where I am today. She was floored and she apologized. My aunt, my mom's sister, she may never apologize to me one day, but she gonna regret all that she said about me. She gonna regret it. <laughs>